have, or you see the big big robins in the, in the front yard in the morning, and, and you're still playing basketball, it's a really good sign. So we're uh, excited about this. We're going to leave in a couple hours to get to Kansas City tonight. We'll get to practice in the media tomorrow. Uh, our kids are, are excited. That was a great uh, weekend for us in so many ways. Uh, continue to just have a, a, a stronger and stronger bond amongst all of us. And uh, I know they're excited about this opportunity to play a really good Oregon team. So really talented team. I mean, very, very talented. I've been watching Dil Dylan Brooks since he was uh, – playing with the Ontario teams earlier uh, in his career. Uh, Tyler Dorsey, Peyton Pritchard, we've all seen them many, many times down the recruiting trail, just extremely uh, talented team. Uh, Jordan Bell as well, really, really good. And then we've seen uh, Ennis uh, playing with the Villanova team a few years ago, and uh, also another uh, Canadian kid who I've, I've seen. Canada's got such a fertile ground for uh, athletes and, and uh, Good basketball players, and, and uh, Oregon's done a great job with, uh, getting some of those kids. So we are, uh, but we're, we're, we're going to be as ready as we can be. We didn't do anything yesterday, and watch uh, some highlights of our game uh, with Louisville. And uh, today will be all about Oregon and our own improvement. Kevin, did anything stand out in watching the Louisville film that you need to correct things learned? Well, it's really that as you get into this level. <laughs> Uh, but where there's only 16s left, the individual talent is incredible to try to guard. I still remember that when I was at West Virginia and came from Richmond and I had all these these uh, schemes that you know you think we could use and then they give the ball to Carmelo Anthony and there was no scheme for that. And now you're getting to that and you just have to, you have to understand that uh, there's some challenges involved with it that you just got to do the best you can but move on to the next play. Uh, but I really liked, I, you know what I really like what we're doing right now is how we are in the fast break, we're pitching the ball ahead. There was a play where, where Derek did not dribble, he usually dribbles, um, and then we threw it ahead to DJ, DJ did not dribble either, just laid it in at the other end, got his steps right, some stuff we work at, that you can see it's some of that, we're getting some baskets in the fast break that are like, they're chancy passes, but I want them to throw them, I want them to try and get those easy baskets, so hard to score. These days, so hard to score in the half court. It's really good to get a few of those. In the back right TV corner. John, uh, after last week, you now have a team that hadn't been to the Sweet 16 in most of this roster ever before. So, with how successful last week it went, did you change a lot in terms of routine and game prep for these guys, or you just try to stay with No, we were doing the same thing, exact same thing that we've done. The Sweet 16 is nothing, it's just another two, two games. So, we're doing the exact same thing. I mean, it's something, but it's like, like, not like, okay, we're going to change things. No, it's the exact same prep we used before we went to the Big Ten uh, tournament. You kind of uh, stay sharp and rest, stay sharp and rest. And then and the logistics of the travel and things like that, there's a lot of that stuff that goes through. Um, so exact same formula. Um, you know, hopefully it's, uh, the, the, the Big Ten travel got a little more complicated, but hopefully this will be really easy. Chris? Obviously, you've got different guys you want shooting free throws down the stretch, but how can DJ's emergence as one of those guys kind of make things easier on the inbound for you at the end of games, or can well, it? Well, I mean, the, our, our two inbounds plays, we just absolutely, I mean, I don't, do not know, we, we, we have a really good scheme there, and we just blew the scheme. It was like we were, sometimes our guys, and it happened in the Oklahoma State game, we had a side out, we run something, and our guys are just posted, they don't run what we're supposed to run. They're, they're either they're tired or not focused. And that, that, you know, we, we're going to work on that today. But that was like, we had a dip, one different person in a different position, and he really uh, uh, regrets making the decisions he made. And uh, but the other people have to help him as well. So we, we'll clean that up. Can you talk about? I don't, have any, I don't have any concerns there. Okay. But it is nice to have a six ten guy you can throw it to, right? Because they switch and they get a guard on him. Peyton Richards on him or something. You throw it up in the air. He fouls. It's good to know that he's a really good foul shooter. With, with um, Wagner, it looks like. Yes. How do you walk that line? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you just embrace it because you know there's a process he's going to go through. If you watched him, they said uh, you, if you go back to my first pr press conference, I him, <coughs> he's going to look like a star, like a, like like a, a can't miss NBA player. One minute you're going to say, "How could Beeline give him a scholarship?" <laughs> the next minute, and you're seeing more of the second than you are the first, uh, or, or you're seeing more of the first than you are the second. But he is. Uh, I, I think we have a good enough bond where he calms down quick.
quick enough. He, he understands. He gets mad at himself a lot, Bob. He really gets mad at himself. And it, but then it will carry on to the next play. So those are the things that we're sort of always dancing with a little bit. But I don't want to rob him of this energy and this passion. You, you heard him in timeouts. I mean, he is a, he's really into it. And we sometimes we just got to tell him, and, and, and it's encouraging. It's encouraging things he's saying. We just got to tell him, we just be quiet here and let us go through the play because he really is is so caring about winning and, and passionate about winning and passionate about his teammates. Andrew? Believe it or not, I do. I really do. And I, I um, and I think most of our league is like that. I hit Matt Painter and I hit Greg Gard uh, right after their games, and they, they both hit me back at, at, as well. Um, it's just, uh, I think we all are, it's going to come and go like this. And like I say, it's so hard for the committee to judge how much teams have improved because you're, 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 it's, it's, Apples and apples early in the year, but those apples could turn to the different it's apples and oranges later on because teams get better. They just get better. And um, some some programs, their teams get better. Some leagues, they just get better. Some are really, um, uh, you, you, you know, you got some incredible coaches in this league that, that you're not going to just go beat them twice, right? They're going to make adjustments. This is really hard to... Uh, to judge teams in those last 18 games and say, okay, they're the same team that lost to Virginia Tech back in the beginning and December 1. I mean, my goodness, it's, it was December, January, February, and it's three months later. And you're saying, well, that, that game is big. It is big. They have to have something. But uh, I think we, do, we just got to – we can't worry about it. And uh, I do think they take into account the next year that when they do that, they say, oh, we missed on that last year. We missed on that, and uh, let's let's really think about this. Marcus, John, obviously you guys are very valued ball. You know, it's 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 not something that we just say, okay, today we got to take care of the ball. It's from like day one, the first summer practice, that we're we're valuing that. You know, we really work hard. That's why you see me get so upset on walking calls, because we work. That's a turnover. You know, and, and we really work hard at our footwork so we don't have things. It's, it's not things like, okay, we got this elaborate press breaker. It's just the day-to-day -day things you do every day, knowing that the way our system works is, is it's about possessions. And if you value every possession by not turning it over, so it's just this emphasis that we're like when we played VCU a few years ago. It was like, how are you going to get ready in one day? We've been getting ready since September 1. For a team like VCU, that we can we can pivot, we pass, and hit the outside hand, and you know, so I, that's the only thing I contributed to. And, and there's something that those two teams are doing that we were probably pretty good at executing against. And another team might have been different because we did have some some high turnover, not a higher turnover games. We had 13 or something. We had nine and one half against somebody um, in the tournament, I think, in the, in the in the Big Ten tournament. So I can't give you any anything other than the kids are smart and they want to win. And they know turnovers don't help you win. Yeah, they're, they're really they're talented, just like both those teams. No, I mean it's great. The best thing you can do to get ready for a team is play other teams that are like them. So we just, you know, they watched the video of it and today. Uh, we think that um, that uh, Oregon's going to do a lot of th a lot of the things. Actually, they ran Dana, the, the Cowboy offense that Oklahoma State ran. Dana's run that a lot in the past at Creighton and in Oregon. Uh, he doesn't run it pro probably as much. Um, it's, uh, but it's Johnny Orr's old offense, actually, is what Oklahoma State was running. And so, you know, there's similarities there. There's similarities in great talent. There's similarities in offensive rebound. So the, every, every game over the course of a season is practice for the next game. And that's what we have. We have two great practices. But you know what? So do they. So uh, who responds the best and who makes their foul shots and takes care of the ball and who, where the ball bounces away will probably determine this one. Um, I think he always wanted to be. That's a good question. I, but I think that he had to have uh, continued to work with, with Saudi, with Jeff, on just embracing contact. Because he wanted to score, but he didn't want physical contact. And, and so, and, and you understand why, and I've said this to all you guys before, when, you, when you're 6'10 and you weigh 190 pounds, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good for contact. But when you're 235, 240, you still have that in your mind, even though you're hurting other people. So, yeah, 
he's sort of starting to embrace that. When he takes that ball strong with two feet in the paint, and in September, October, even in December, it, it, there was a, he wouldn't get through the first contact. So you gotta be convinced that this is fun, embracing contact. And now he's really doing it. And so I think that he understands uh, that uh, he can do it. I think he's always wanted to do it, but now he can understand he can do it. And when you see the stuff he's doing now, and some of these like swooping plays that he has yeah. kind of going to the basket, are there any kind of player comparisons that jump out in your mind or anything? I had a kid, Tyrone Sally, that's a lot like him. was only about six seven. It was like this at uh, at West Virginia. That was really a good player, um, and played played that position. He was a little skinnier, but it, w it would be some similar. And, and uh, as, as he evolves as a player, right, and just learn, he's just now, you know, he's got this quiet disposition. You should hear him now in, in timeouts, um, and in, in in just any discussion. He really thinks basketball. Uh, him and Mo were talking the other day. He says, can you give me a minute here so I can coach? Because they, they weren't talking. You just let me talk to the team for a second. They were going back and forth. Of course, Mo has already got a counter for what he's trying to do. So it's fun. But it's good to have kids like that that are, they really are engaged in being better basketball players and helping their teammates. John, this may fall right along with what you just said. But at the beginning, you said this team's just growing stronger and stronger together. Is it more than just the, the, the events of the last two weeks? Uh, or is it stuff like you were just mentioning there with uh, DJ and Mo that they, they're just feeling more confident and everybody's yeah, feeling it's, that? It's, it's all about the process again, you know, that you go through with these, these, these young men that starts in the beginning and they see it if they're good kids, they're not finger pointers, they realize that there's another level of things they can do and do efficiently. Um, pretty soon it, it works. And you blow through, DJ, you blow through contact and you finish at the rim or you finish near the rim, right? You say, oh, that's what the coaches have been, been talking about. And uh, yeah, really funny. Uh, they are, uh, what's that called? No, is there a name for that? Photobombing? Photobombing. Press conference bombing. Uh, it, they, they, but once they do it, then they say, okay. They get, it's, it's like recognition, you know, it's like, it's, it's just really good for them to, to, to see them develop like that. But it's not, I can't emphasize enough, there's been so many just tremendous events. You, if you watch this team play Indiana early in the year, and, and here, and there, and that was, that was a heck of a team. And, all, and to be able to put the numbers on, you can see they had the potential. Could we do it consistently? That, that's what we're doing right now. Kind of, you saw your team turning the corner. And I, I, I think the winning the, those four games in a row against who you beat, right? The teams that are all high, you know, um, and Wisconsin obviously could, should have been a higher seed. So you beat four teams there. I mean, Wisconsin just beat the heck out of Northwestern, and all of a sudden you're beating them. But go beat Purdue twice in the same season. I mean, they got a tremendous. This is a, this is a Sweet 16. You beat them twice in the same season. I think that after that, these kids just said, "Hey." Um, you know, we go into this NCAA tournament, uh, we can play with, with, with anybody after the gauntlet they just ran. Remember how hot Illinois was when we were playing them? And here we show up in practice uniforms and we play like, you know, we're, we, we might have played a couple of games like we were the Golden State Warriors, right? And uh, we, it was, I think they believe right there we can, we just stick with it. Uh, we're going to have to have some breaks go our way. They did. Uh, we can keep playing for a while. No. The other thing that changed is he's a stretch guy too. He can shoot. So, uh, but uh, the, the kid uh, uh, Jordan Bell, you see a, a center with 60 some assists. He's a problem. He's a real problem uh, for us because he, he's a really good offensive rebound. But they can play through him so much. You know, if you look at his assist numbers and our big kids' assist numbers, uh, he's really good. So it's, what it's done is put him as the uh, the primary big. Uh, it, it bringing the young man, the kid off the bench, the sophomore off the bench, who was a shot blocker as well. So uh, that kid, I didn't see enough of him. I didn't see him other than his stats. So I have no no idea. But they weren't 30 and something with him uh, without being good, better with him. But at the same time, they really have enough ammo in that gun that it, I don't think they'll drop off too much.